What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 165 of the JLS Gaming Show. I'm your host, Will A.K. LaSalle. Let's do it. We got a special one here. This one's going to go long, guys, right? So, you know, grab a snack. I forgot to grab a <laughs> bottle of water. You know what I'm trying to say? So, And I know I'm going to get parts. So if you see me, you know, tap out or something like that, and the beautiful Liliana LaSalle, wink, wink, she's out there watching, brings me a bottle of water, you know, um, you might see that interrupted. I got the guys from Retro Gaming Revival, and let me get into a real quick introduction on. So it's a special, I I'm going to say it now, probably a part one, right? Because um, we're going to go go long. Ah, oh, so she actually, <laughs> she's paying funny. attention. <laughs> so, Amazing. Dream Amazing. Amazing. The dream work. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's great. You know, we got other people in, in here as well, right? We got Ali nice Ali. Man. But yes. here's the thing. So we got these great guys. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. They're they're you know right now, and that's why we're starting this one a little early in the East Coast time. Um, but again, we have so many people that watch um in the in the EU, um, that watch from Latin America, that that watch from um China, you know, I'm trying to say where else we got Morocco, you know. So all these people that'll watch the replay and everything like that, but we're always experimenting with times. So my apologies to anyone that it's not going to catch it live at 6 p.m. Eastern like we normally do. But, you, you know, leave a comment and anything below. So, really, ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. So, really. That's amazing. Guys, Beautiful. Let's start from the, from the top row. I don't even know. Like, I'm not an expert at StreamYard. But this thing, so it just put people where it put people, right? I don't know if it was, well, you know, based, based off attendance. But we'll start with Blunners. But he's going to tell you what his name is. And, and we're going to get an intro. And then really talk to the entire team and, and get down to retro gaming, gaming content, why they do what they do. You know what I'm trying to say? How do they get these great UK based celebrities, but they're worldwide as well, right? Um, wink, wink, right? Because they're going to have some US guests on soon. But, you know, how they get these great celebrities, great people that I've I've said to them, you know, um, like Top Hat Gaming that I've set, sat there, his latest video that's over an hour, I haven't. You know it's saved i haven't had the chance you know when i'm when i'm outside of the pandemic traveling a lot of the the longer mm -hmm. content i save it and um offline and watch it on airplane trips mm -hmm. so i'm sitting there boom you know that's when i can watch it because otherwise you know it's really tough for me to grab um long content um usually what i do is multitask so i'll leave it playing in the background and i don't want to do that kind of disservice right because i love top hat gaming i love his whole thing the wrestling personality <laughs> the the whole and his his yeah. knowledge and that's one of the things right plus you guys are real good friends with uh ali ali 16 bits and bob who's just legend. a yeah he's 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 a legend man he's gonna yeah, go places legend. and everything like that there he is trying to flirt with my wife though man but so you, watch <laughs> it from, you know but um <laughs> go ahead blunders take it away man right um well um i'm blunders short for my surname's blunt so Got a nickname at school and it just stuck like shit to a blanket. So, but um, so basically, been playing games pretty much my whole life since I could walk. Start off the spectrum and that, and then um, next thing I know, we got NES, and even that was it, game over. Nintendo all the way. Um, we even like just I import stuff in from Japan. I've got a virtual boy as well. I had to get in from the states because never came out over here. I remember seeing it, and thinking, what is this thing? But so yeah, um, that's basically me. Just a bit of a Nintendo nut. Don't mind the odd Sega. I like the Dreamcast and that, but I was more a Nintendo growing up in the playground than on Sega. That's me. Awesome. Thanks, Blunders. Ryan. All Elite Ryan. Yeah. Um, like the All Elite part too, dude. But there's nothing Elite about me. I just like All Elite Wrestling. <laughs> so... Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's why all elite um it's not a very good name really but i've just stuck with it ever since um i go back to the nes 8-bit era in gaming and um, that was the first console i played and had um i think about 1991 i got a nintendo nes the duck hunt and um super mario pack entertainment pack was that called or yeah something like that yeah. um and yeah. then i progressed to mega drive playstation one playstation two um xbox 360 randomly in there and then i went back to playstation 4 5 since then so um pretty much my whole life i've gamed i if i'm honest i prefer retro games to modern games um i, I feel that 
more recent games just are more difficult or they just take up so much time to actually play them and get into them so that, that that's really me awesome awesome right and we'll touch base on that point because i i agree with what you were saying as far as some of the newer games and why the preference is retro so moving right along and we'll we'll snake dobbs let everybody know good evening yeah dobbs um i don't really know what to say about myself really um i'm more of a commodore <laughs> fan <to> say. <laughs> yeah it's not much. i've lived a very very boring and dull life so there's not really much to say um i lived under the stairs for 15 years so didn't get much sunlight um but you know i'm more of a commodore back in the day i'm more of a commodore I never had a snes never had a snes never had a mega drive master system i have played them of course um, but I never owned one. So, yeah, more of a Commodore man myself. And in respect to Ryan's comment about modern gaming, I do like some modern games. Um, probably a bit more retro, but modern games, I do I do love them, don't get me wrong. But my, uh, we'll probably touch on this later, but my bugbear I hate is when you put in a, uh, a game and then, bam, 100 gig update. And it's like, oh, <laughs> it just takes yeah. so long. Just, yeah. Yeah, kills me. Absolutely kills me. Nintendo, Nintendo, Ollie. <laughs> Excellent. So, I'm Ollie as well. I'm, I'm, I'm the second Ollie of the group. Um, I grew up in the the eight bit era, so the NES was my first system, as probably most people here. Actually, yeah, the eight bit era was um my generation of gaming. Um, much like Blunners, I basically stuck with Nintendo. You know, you 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 sort of picked a team when you were younger because you 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 didn't get more than one console, so you you kind of stuck with it and through thick and thin. Um. And I stuck with Nintendo all the way to Nintendo 64 um, and then um, was lucky enough to get a, a PlayStation around uh, the Nintendo 64 era as well. And then mm. I kind of jumped ship, went straight over to PlayStation, PS2, um, and then moved into Xbox 360 because PS3 was taking too long to come out. Um, but by that point, I was in full-time employment, so I was able to kind of sustain my gaming habit. So that was the first, the Xbox 360, PS3, Wii era is the first time that I was able to kind of live. I was living at home still with my parents, so I just spent all my money on on games and stuff. So I went multi-console at that point and kind of haven't turned back, really. Um, I do like modern gaming a lot. Um, I tend to, to put a lot of my time into whatever is the current generation, um, but I do I do play a lot of retro games as well. And now I've got kids, I get to relive those retro games with my kids. And yes, yeah, it's, it's great fun, really good fun. That that's uh, that's AKA beat beat your kids at Mario Kart and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. They, and they, take they, great pleasure, Street Fighter, they... Mario Kart. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, I do the same thing, Nintendo Ali, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But but the the great thing is, even before kids, me and me and the beautiful Liliana LaSalle used to play uh, Mario Kart, right? Mario Kart sixty four. We used to play. So before we had kids, um, SOCOM, you know those yeah. kind of games yeah. and all that stuff. And last but not least, Triangle Face, and he's got to explain to us why he's called Triangle Face. <laughs> oh, I can start off with that. Right, yeah, so um, I, I did do a bit of um, YouTube on my own before I joined up with these guys uh, many years ago, uh, probably about 15 odd years ago now, so they're quite old videos. Uh, but Triangle Face was kind of like my my brand, I guess you could call it. Um, I started doing awesome. some like, games as well. Um, so my Triangle Face first was like what I was going to call my game development studio, if you will, if, if it was just me. Um, and then I started making some YouTube videos and I carried on with the name Triangle Face. And then it was my gamer tag when I got onto like the more modern consoles. So the short answer is it's my gamer tag, but it originally came from <laughs> to like make games, um, which has always been like something I've been into. Um, so yeah, but my, my gaming, I, I think I first started gaming. Um, the earliest thing I remember playing was like a BBC Micro. So my family had a BBC Micro. Um, which had like some very basic games on there. And then we got the Acorn and the Archimedes. So when I was in school, that was the computer the schools had, that I, well, the school I went to had that computer. Mm -hmm. um, and my parents wanted us to have the same kind of computer at home so we could like take home working on disk and things like that um, for word processing. And it did have some games on it. And now a lot of the games on there were things that you would also get like the Amiga. So I never had an Amiga, but I was able to play games like Zool and um, like James Pond and, and things like that because we could get them on the Acorn. Um, but it wasn't until uh, we got a Mega Drive that got really into gaming. I think once we got the Mega Drive, that's when I was like, okay, this is something I'm really into. Before it was kind of something I dabbled in. Um, but I've got an older brother who was the one that uh, nagged our parents for a console um, and he wanted the Mega Drive. So I just went for the Mega Drive. I never had that to go Sega or Nintendo 
thing because you know my older brother got a mega drive and then i was off and i probably played the mega drive way more than he did uh, i was glued to that thing i think quite a lot <laughs> but uh, yeah and then i went um from i guess playstation one was probably like the next big thing and then stick with playstation and like similar to ollie as soon as i was at an age where i had a bit of a disposable income i went back and i got the consoles i didn't get i got myself an n64 i then yeah. had like 360 xbox one ps4 um and then i had kids and i've gone back to not affording any consoles <laughs> so <laughs> in the era it's like oh, i've got disposable income chuck money at consoles buy loads of games and now i'm like ah don't ha you know want to spend money in the family so no xbox series s yet or no uh, ps5 yet so i'll wait until i can justify spending money on that sort of thing <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, that that stuff is like most of us, right? We got old enough to, to well, I don't want to say old enough, but we started getting disposable or dispensable, whatever it's called, income. And then we buy the games and then we have no time to play them. My back catalog is like insane. I still got to play Twilight Princess and I bought that on day one on the Wii. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm, I'm st with with a strategy guide and it's just like I still it's still in my back catalog and, and stuff like that um, because around that time then i was i was studying me and my wife were expecting liliana were expecting our first child um willow who was in there as well and um i was finishing up my mba so it's like i'm walking around with books every minute you know what i'm trying to say and trying to help you know help her out and all that good stuff but it makes sense right you grow up and and, and you got the passion and the love xbox series x ps5 great great systems but um there's just some of the games there, kind of like what Ryan started off with saying with the newer games, they take so much time. So mm -hmm. it's like you and and you got to some of these guys beat these games and spoil them on YouTube, man. Right. In like yeah. a day. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you got to stay off and, and block and, and not, you know, <laughs> want to get spoiled with the endings, um, which 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 ties into, I think, what Dobbs was saying that like you, you pop in a game or a system. And then you got a hundred gigabyte update, right? And a lot of these <laughs> games, what they do is they'll do a day one update that'll actually have the ending or something like that, right? So that way, even if people leakers or whatever like that, it doesn't really have the ending. So it's not getting spoiled by a leaker that had it, had the game a week early or something, but it's crazy. And we'll talk about that. So we, I, what, what I want to ask and whichever one of you guys are collectively want to answer, you know, with the channel, Right. Tell us how the channel came to be. Right. Retro Gaming Revival. And tell us what what you know, what's your plan? Is it is it world domination? Right. <laughs> is it just doing it, doing it for fun? You know, what's what's your guys plan with it? What you're doing it? And it's OK if it's just, hey, we're just doing it for the love. Like Ali, that was on the show earlier, um, like Shadow Dragon, that game dragon that's on here, you know, where, you know, they, we got day jobs or whatever like that. But they're doing it for the love. Let us know, man. And. And also let people know where they can find you guys, right? And we're going to have all the links below and everything like that after the show, but feel free to let them know. All right. Okay, all right. so you take this. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll start it. I'll, I'll, we're not trying for world domination. That's not going very well for someone else at the moment. So we, we're going to rule that out straight away. Um, but the reason, the, the, the reason um, we started the channel, it was back February last year. Um, the UK was in lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. Dorbs, Blunners, and Nintendo Lee and myself um, got talking, and we thought maybe we could do a, a YouTube podcast show where we talk about upcoming retro consoles or games that are coming out, things like the Amico and Television, Evercade, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and give our thoughts on it. And um, that that was the original idea, and we've done a couple of shows like that and then a couple of youtubers reached out to us and said oh can we you know join you as a guest and it evolved nice. very quickly from there and after i think Tri triangle face you came on as a guest quite early yeah. on um mm -hmm. i've known you for a number of years um and, and so has blunners and, and ollie as well and um after you were a guest you kept reappearing every single week and we thought this is a, a very good <laughs> very good dynamic with, with triangle so face here so um triangle face became a member of the full-time panel very very quickly after we started um so yeah from the original just us collectively talking about games um with a couple of youtubers i think it was it's much more um who's a uk-based youtuber and um 
a couple of others reached out to us. We had them on um, shortly after Tommy Tallarico. I know he's, he's a controversial name, so I don't, I don't want to dwell on him too much, but we, we had him on. Um, and after that, we thought this really works having a guest on. Let's reach out to some UK based gaming television celebrities and let's see if they'll come on. And then all of a sudden, Dorbs um, is kind of the man who'll go and approach these people. He'll drop us a message on WhatsApp. You'll never believe it. Big boy Barry's <laughs> coming on, which will mean yeah. nothing to you, AK, but he's a big, um, a big UK based gaming celebrity. And then it was, it just steamrolled from there. And then we, we've had, um, Top Hat Gaming Man, um, Lady Decade. Um, you guys are going to have to help me out because my brain is uh, blank. Where Gebs 24. Yep, Gebs 24. Larry, Larry Bundy. Yeah. All of the yeah. twins. All the twins, all twins, all the twins yeah. And everybody you're mentioning is, is like, yeah, they're based in the UK, but I've seen all of them before um, your guys' interviews. So they're we also, definitely... Um, we had Al Lowe as well. <laughs> Al Lowe, yeah. Sierra online as well. He's really, really, really cool. We've, we've been sort of quite had quite a lot to do with the the Games Master as well because Games Master was quite a popular show, um, you know, back in the the early nineties in the UK. And we, I think, the first show that I came on with these guys as a guest, we talked about nineties uh, gaming TV shows, and we talked a lot Beautiful. about Games Master. Um, and I think even Ollie was just like we we joked about having Dave Perry on as a guest. You're like, oh yeah, that's never going to happen. We're never going to be able to do that. And then lo and behold, you know, what a couple of months later, he, he was on chatting, and then mm. he came. We had a bunch of them back on for our Christmas special. Um, yeah, I think it was good timing as well because we didn't obviously didn't know that Games Master was going to come back, and then Games Master made a bit of a resurgence on uh, on a, a channel over here. We had E4 had um, their YouTube, and then on their TV program, put another Games Master back on. Um, and we were having people associated with the show on. We had another guest on the CV Ward. He was a um, like a uh, consultant on the show. Mm. Uh, and then we had uh, Big Boy Barry was was back on that, and yeah, he came and spoke to us. So yeah, it's been really good to like have that connection with the with the Games Master and speak to the people that are involved in it and hear all the stories about what was going on behind the scenes. And all, they all, all got such great stories to tell about that mm. time and what they were doing. And, and you know that one of the biggest things is. I, with with gaming is that it's it's global right and a lot of people uh sometimes they just stay in their in their areas right so they just think oh uk you know out in japan or whatever latin america north america and it's it's crazy because uh that game dragon right and i'll, I'll make some i'll allude to some of the stuff where where he knows right um we were big importers too I know he still imports stuff and, and all that, right? So we were big importers. One of the things I want to get in with you guys is the whole US and UK game collecting, right? The variations, right? <laughs> in, what, one of the things that I noticed that you guys said, which is close to my heart, because you know I'm not making this up and just because I got you guys on the show, like the Dreamcast is my favorite game system of all time, right? And I have, but here in Nintendo, it was Nintendo versus Sega, right? The early 90s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just really chose Nintendo, Nintendo. What I've noticed internationally and having Ali on the show a few weeks ago too, that there's a lot of love for Sega. So with that said, what are you guys thoughts on Sega? Which if, if, if you see some of our shows, right? What we try to do, and that's why I shouted out Game Dragon, et cetera, is we try to talk about things from the gaming, from an industry and a business perspective, right? So we'll talk about startups, Triangle. I love, and I want to hear more about your development studio, right? Whether, you know, and, and stuff like that, right? And so we talk about startups in gaming. We talk about diversity and inclusion in gaming. We talk about gaming content creators and showing each other more love, right? Like you guys are showing love and, and these other big YouTubers are showing you guys love. Like that's to me, warms my heart what is it that you guys see as collectible in eu versus in the us right one thing that i said in the video and i'll give you this example stadium events i believe right it's a crappy game right and but it's like one of the most expensive games in the united states because of its rarity but apparently it's more it was more readily available or whatever like that in the eu so is it something where it, holds value and stuff like that or not like like what do you guys see as the variations is sega and mega drive mega drive stuff right master system stuff is that more 
more popular in the EU versus we had El Rafias on talking about this kind of kind of differentiation between North America and Latin America because you guys know Latin America they're way behind so they get systems like years later and they get even the and, and the life systems that we think are in the life they get new versions like I think they have a Sega Master System 3 a Sega Master System 4 out there in like Brazil and Southern South, South America. <laughs> what are you guys' thoughts? I talked a lot there. I'm gonna drink some more water. <laughs> I, get a snack. <laughs> I, I vividly remember um like going to London with my dad. It would be like a like a weekend thing. He'd be like, oh let's go to London for the day. And it would be certainly when I was sort of maybe Super Nintendo N64, the PlayStation was just coming out in Japan. So for, for us like importing in the in the nineties and early noughties wasn't but it wasn't really a thing you could do unless you had a magazine, which in the back catalog had um, where you could access import games. You would normally have to go to a store. And the only stores that I knew of were in London because my dad would take me to London. We'd go into these stores and I would just cry over the amount of incredible games that would be there. And my dad would then cry at the price um, <laughs> because uh, everything import was just yeah. it, it was so out of reach. Um, it's uh, it's a strange one. I, it, I think the, the power versions of things generally, for some reason, seem to be cer certainly in the UK. Maybe maybe it's because it's the one that people can readily play more more availably. Is it, the, the power stuff is more expensive? Um, mm. You know, like one of a, a game that's it's not great, but it's a game I love. Is like Hook on the Super Nintendo. You know, and uh, to to pick up a boxed power copy of that, you know, we're looking at. I don't know, 150, 160 pounds. So I don't know, 180, 190 dollars. But yeah. you could pick up a, a fairly nice conditioned, boxed NTSC version of of Hook on the Super Nintendo and import it for, I don't know, like a hundred pound if you really want to. Um, mm -hmm. So if, I, I don't know what it is about the the power thing that maybe it is just because because we can we can play it more readily available and um, you know you, you we needed to have those. Um, like those region system cartridge things where you put one in the top one on the back and that's how we would play import games and i, I haven't seen anyone sell those for years so it's yeah. maybe it's just because with the resurgence of retro gaming people want the ones that they can play um so certainly maybe for the uk it's unless you've got a you know an american super nintendo like blunners has it's you know we're, we're kind of stuck with what we've got yeah only recently um picked up because i remember when i was a kid we didn't even know there was a different version of the Super Nintendo. Do you know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. I didn't have a clue. And I remember my brother brought back this um, NCAA like game. Obviously, yeah, completely different, that completely different cartridge. And um, I just like we had to like put a slot in, put one of our games in the back, and then put this game in the top of it, and then it would work. Just work mm -hmm. through our system, which is really weird. But um, yeah, it wasn't until um, like recently. I've got one. I've got one in obviously where my brother lives in Columbus. I just anything like American wise, like because I'm a bit of an amiibo collector. I've got all of them, and um, like the Gold and Silver Mario's that only come out in America. I make. I just log into his eBay account and I just buy them <laughs> and send them, send them to him. And that's and it was the same with like the um, with the Virtual Boy. We've seen it in museums and heard about it, but never ever actually held one or seen one in real life and i remember buying it in my brother's ebay and when my family kept going out there they kept forgetting to bring back the thing and he was like mate this is crap i am not paying i'm not paying like 50 bucks 60 to 100 bucks to get this posted to you i had to wait until someone randomly brought it home for me after about two years it was in there so i don't I, like i just don't know what why like, the import stuff is like the well games and it could be it seems like the crappiest the crap of the game is the more expensive it is. I don't know what how that is. But... That that's well, something that well, massively well, winds me up. That yeah. games yeah. that that were rubbish that nobody wanted. They're the ones that now everyone wants. I, I, I think it's get it. it's, it's got to do with the shelf. It's got to do with the that's print fine. run, hasn't it? Because they because yeah. they sold mm -hmm. terribly. Nobody bought them, so therefore there's you know there's not very many of them in existence. And especially with the Super Nintendo stuff as well, where the boxes are cardboard and you know cardboard unless you look after it deteriorates and. You know, so to to find like a, a game that's only got, I say, four thousand copies of it, and the box is in, yeah, I, I can see why people want it, but you know, I'm not paying triple figures for a game that's awful. Like, why would you do that? That's crazy. That's ridiculous. It, ridiculous. It's always one of the biggest debates that I have with with the guests on the show. Not that we, <clears throat> not that we're debating each other, because we usually, but I don't understand some of the the sometimes some of the arguments, right? Purists and everything. 
but I want to touch base because because I, I got an it popped in my head to ask you guys two things for each of you, right? And we'll go around. We'll go in reverse, starting with, with triangle face. One, what's the what's the best piece in your collection, right? From a value perspective, and then two, what's the best piece from a nostalgia for you perspective, right? Because that's different, right? Because somebody could sit there and say, "I got a box Super Mario Brothers three, but that's so pop, you know." That's not rare. That's not this. It's probably a hundred bucks. I mean, I bought one for 90 bucks or whatever in great condition before WADA screwed up the market, right? And this is like <laughs> two, three years ago. I bought, you know, so, but that's again, it holds a lot of nostalgia and everything like that, but it's not the most expensive piece in the collection. So starting in reverse order from Triangle Face, go. What what are those two? I mean, I don't know if I've really got anything that's that um pricey to be honest because I, I was we we're talking about this the other day I, i've got a few old nes games um mm -hmm. that i would have thought would have been fairly rare for like i've got metal gear on the nes um, nice. and i've got That's things good. like um i've got a box copy of ducktales uh which i thought but they're not actually worth that much when you go and look them up so i don't i don't think i've got any rare games in my collection i think when um all the mega drive games i tended to have like ones i bought uh, myself yeah. and I've just kept and kept there all in nice condition. But when I went back and bought the back catalog of stuff for games I didn't have, like my NES games are just mostly cartridge only. So I've only got the cartridges and things like that. I think the only system that um, I probably should have kept the boxes for and didn't was a Game Boy. Because uh, I look at mm -hmm. some of the prices now for some Game Boy games, like I've got Pokemon Red and Blue, I've got Zelda, um, Link's Awakening, just the cartridge in the case. I didn't keep the boxes. And I look at a boxed copy of some of those games now, they're worth quite a bit of money. Um, and going on to, I think the probably most nostalgic thing for me was the um, Zelda Link's Awakening on the Game Boy. Um, and that was just because um, I remember that was something my nan got for me uh, for Christmas one year. Um, and I always got you know, the typical thing with your nan, you'd always get like these weird presents, right? You'd get the Itchy Jumper, you'd get like you know, an album for a band you have no interest in. She used to say that I liked rap music. I don't know what rap music is, but I was into punk. So <laughs> I don't know what, what she thought was going on. But then all of a sudden, she gives me Zelda, Link's Awakening. And I was like, this is like, how did you know to get me this? I think she just went to a shop and told someone in the shop that I had a Game Boy and figured out a game to get me. Um, so I always really enjoyed having that because that was something that it was that she put the effort into figuring out what it was I was talking about because she had no idea about yeah. games and gaming and she obviously put in some effort to figure out what a good game for me to have was and ended up getting Link's Awakening, which I think is probably my favorite game in the Game Boy. Um, so that's probably my one of my favorite things and, I've got. And that's way. a great, yeah, that's a great yeah. game. The, the original, the remake, DX is a great game. I'm going to try to bring Nintendali into the main focus if I screw this up because I want more people <laughs> out there to see while he's yeah. talking to actually see his background. Don't, yeah, don't look at the magazine. Oh, yeah, most, so see. most most of this is unfortunately most of this is movies. Um, I'm a physical media hoarder. I love physical media. If there's a, a version of it physical, yeah. I've got to have it. I can't do the digital thing unless it's digital only. So unfortunately, all my games are like there, and that's not all of them. This is just the stuff that's readily available. Um, yeah, all my stuff's in the loft, unfortunately. Um, oh no, but that's still a great that's still a great background, man. And, and with ass, the comics, and it's see horror, some Nintendo you know, magazines. Up you know, there, who else you is know? buying 4K copies of The Fog and They Live? Like someone's got to. It's got to be me. I see. I um, see a bong mm -hmm. in the background. Oh no, no, no! no. That's an alien. That's an oh, alien. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's my mini shrine to alien because all my alien <laughs> stuffs Any, in the loft as well. <laughs> just about anything can be used as a bong. So. Uh, you probably could make it work, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I reckon it's probably not very retro, but I think probably the, the most expensive thing in my collection, um, I'm, I'm lucky that a lot of the games that I had from childhood, my, my dad is a stickler for keeping things nice and neat. Um, so I have all the original NES boxes and um, game boxes and system boxes, which is a big thing as well for, for everything that I've ever owned, which, which is down to my dad. Um, but I was just sort of looking at what I've got sort of readily available and the first thing that jumps out at me that, that people and it's a classic example what ryan was saying about people paying silly money for, for terrible terrible games is um mm -hmm. probably godzilla on ps4 um it was it came out over here it was 50 quid it got terrible reviews and i remember thinking i like godzilla but i'm not paying 50 quid for that that's going to be in a bargain bin before i know it um and it sold terribly so there's not very many of them out there. And then it became really expensive really quickly. And then all of a sudden it was like 150 pounds, 180 pounds. You're like, well, I'm just never going to buy that then. Um, and then I was in our local um, store over here called Game, which is like your version of GameStop. Um, and they had it secondhand for 20 pounds. So 
I of oh. course picked that up and was like, "Yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll take that." And it is terrible. I'm not entirely sure it's worth twenty pounds either, but. I've seen people pay yeah upwards of like 180 200 pounds for this game and you're just thinking really so it just sits on my shelf and just looks pretty because i've completed it and it's terrible but it's worth a lot of money so it just sits there um mm -hmm. nostalgia wise it's probably got to be either mario 64 because that was the first proper 3d game i remember playing with a analog stick on the nintendo 64 controller and you know mario is definitely my thing um or as much Dorps will hate me for it, um, Final Fantasy VII, because that was the first the first JRPG that I played. It was probably the first proper RPG I played, um, and it just it blew my mind. Still my favorite game of all time now, so, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Dob, same thing for you. Uh, do you want to have a look at my background? Focus too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a look at my background. <laughs> What's he got there? I've got all my uh, <laughs> American stuff, so... World Cup USA 94. And then I've got many games with America or USA in it. So I've just got some American films. Um, I'll only pick one out. Team America, World Police. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the best one. Um, Love that. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll fish these out. American now. Psycho, that's 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 so good. Yeah, yeah, that's still sealed. I, haven't, I have seen it, but it's the 4K version. It is still sealed. Coming to America. They've all fallen oh, down. Nice. I've got, I like Ollie's got his T-shirt because I've actually got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre there as well on Blu-ray. And that's great. I gotta watch the the Netflix. Nothing one. says America like a massacre. Hey, wow, well, Texas, isn't it? Texas. Is oh yeah, America. yeah, true. So, um, bring respect to your questions. Um, I'm probably gonna bore everyone because I know um, my, uh, my my Steam colleagues know the story, but I picked up a uh, Mega Drive collection, and it's a chap who i know he sort of messaged me until i got this mega drive collection uh gave me a list of games box mega drive bloody bloody blah, blah, blah this game alone is worth 150 quid are you interested and i was like oh here we go he's gonna want like five six hundred quid and he said it's, it's yours for 150 quid which was yeah i just couldn't believe that so i grabbed it off him but um in that collection i know it's, it's i wouldn't say it's rare but it's quite expensive it's streets of rage 3 um which is easily 150 200 quid game for some reason it's mm -hmm. it's actually ridiculous um, all of I don't know. sorry it was all of them wasn't it streets of rage as well yeah i've got oh, yeah it's all three there but yeah streets rate three on its own is like 150 quid is so yeah mm -hmm. i got that for an absolute steal um and he chucked in a c64 with loads of games as well for another 100 quid so that's an absolute bargain um and it's also got one of ali's games that he wants splatterhouse 2 um I'm not going to sell it to him. I can't. I can't bring. I can't bring myself to sell it. Um, but still, still in storage. Um, Splatterhouse two on, on which system? Mega Drive. Uh, oh, Mega Drive. Okay. Oh yeah, Genesis for you, for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, in respect to the second bit, I've still got my original Amiga six hundred and CD thirty two with some box games. Um, not got many because over here, oh, look at all that love, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> um, because Ali, Ali said Final Fantasy VII best RPG ever, so I had to no show chance. that love because that's no. my favorite game. So, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the... but go ahead, oh, yes. go ahead. Oh, yeah, right. What's, what's the... Oh, sorry, got to go now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, in, in all seriousness, yeah, I mean, I got my original Amiga 600 CD32, um, a few, a few box games because. Back in the day, who bought games for the for the Commodore Amiga? You just went into school. I've got a copy of this game. Do you want it? Yeah, right then. Next day, you had a you know, Fate of Atlantis on eleven discs. Backup. Or Monkey Island or Monkey Island Two or yeah, go get you Beneath a Steel Sky. You, you had a backup copy of it. It's not copy, just a, a backup copy. Um, so I've got thousands of those uh, backed up games, of course. Um, but yeah, I've got quite a few box games as well. Which one of them is there? World Cup 94, USA 94. Yeah, USA yeah, 94. Um, there you go. Oh, man. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Dobbs. All, all Elite Ryan. Well, what, I'm, I'm going to be quite disappointing for you because I don't actually collect um, <laughs> retro games. Um, I've, I've got like the mini consoles. Um, so I guess for nostalgia, um, the NES Mini would be the, the favorite um thing that i've got because the nes was the first console that I had um so to be able to play that hdmi with a nes controller brings back a lot of memories for me 
Um, in terms of games that I have still got, um, probably, um, and this is, I, I don't even know why I kept these, but there must be some nostalgia to them. I've got all the Legends of Wrestling game on PlayStation 2, and I've got the SmackDown games on PlayStation 2 as well. Um, so there must be a reason why I've hung on to them, and I guess that is for nostalgia, that I, I don't want to get rid of them. Mm. Um, I, I haven't played them for years, but I quite like looking at the boxes and the manuals every now and again. Um, especially the Legends of Wrestling games. Got an amazing roster on there. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, that, that is my collection. <laughs> so, but, um, but those those <clears throat> mini classics are, first off, even those are collectibles now because Nintendo stopped the production on them and Scalper's going to scalp. We always say that on here, the Scalpers. So oh, there's scalp. a market for them. And second, that's a great little... They're great form factors, especially if you hack them. You know, I'm trying to say um, because you literally can. I mean, half the stuff that's been mentioned before we get to blunders, right? You can literally pay play on an SNES or NES Classic, right? <laughs> if you if you mod it, you can play PS1, Turbo Graphics 16, Mega Drive, Master System. So you can load all that stuff onto that nice little form factor single board computer. So that's a great little system. And again, not everybody has space, you know. I'm trying to say to to store to store things in a collection too, man. That's what yeah. what uh is part of it. So before I steal your thunder, blunder, blunders, go ahead, man. What's uh what's good? Well, um, we do actually have a hashtag that we do pro hashtag pricey games. Pricey games. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he does that quite a bit where we, if we're out and about and you see games at a ridiculous price, you take a sneaky photo of it and then you. Hashtag it in our group. So um, I think what did you get recently? It was a Pokemon game for like two hundred and twenty-five pound, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, about two hundred and fifty dollars. But um, so yeah, I've got quite a lot of collectible stuff. Um, the my main main thing is I got well with all the with a full set of, of Amiibo at the minute. Um, some one of I've got this little one, um, Japanese box boy, and it is worth three hundred pound, three fifty, unboxed. And that's just that because obviously, like you said, Nintendo don't even they read the reprint them, it didn't even get released over here. I managed to pick it up for about 30 pounds, about 50 dollars sent from Japan at the time. But, um, I've also got the Zelda 1 and 2 NES by like, mint condition box. But this thing here is uh, my little my favorite, which is oh my goodness, that's beautiful, Famicom yeah. and a disc system, yeah. and I actually picked picked it picked up quite cheap, but it was really yellow. Like, like someone had been proper smoking in there, so I ended up <laughs> um, I ended up taking it completely to bits and then just bright lighting it up and getting it all back to its original color. Um, so which took about three weeks, four but to about a month, like in the chemical with the lights on it, just trying to get some color back into it. But yeah, um, so I was quite happy and chuffed about that came out. And for nostalgia wise, I've got to go with this because it is literally the first game. I ever played and it was this is my original disc was the mario and duck hunt nes cartridge yeah. that that was just literally the first thing we played um and that's basically even my missus can still plays that my wife so it's like nice. that is nostalgic for us lot because it is literally the first thing i really remember playing and actually getting like, like stuck into what well, you know um did the famicom disc system come out in eu or no no, no, or that was no, Japan. Not even, only? Fam, none of it, yeah. like, not even the top load. I got top loader NES, um, which came out in the States. That never came out. Oh, okay. Here. And the top okay. loader, the SNES Junior, I got that from mm -hmm. imported from the States. That never came out here. And um, the one oh, thing beautiful. I've got my eye on is a Panasonic Q, the Panasonic <laughs> Shiny GameCube. That's the, the one I want. That's the GameCube one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking. I have an eBay. You were talking about eBay and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Your brother. I have an eBay search. For um, I mean, it ties yeah. into the next question. I asked it into the chat too for for the for the guys watching live and um everything like that. But um, I'm trying to get my hands. I saw one at a show at an event in November. Um, a twin Famicom, right? Uh, oh yeah, I think yeah. that was I made agree. by Panasonic or Sharp. Yeah, Sharp or Panasonic, right? So I'm getting my hands, but oh, it's like an import one, and I bought something now with the supply chain and and shipping containers. I bought something from Japan, I think it was end of November, beginning of December, still haven't received it. And we're in what, right. March in a couple of days. And the guy's like, yeah, that's about right for this time. And I'll, I'm what? looking at 
Vulix, Vulix or Chulix, which those are like the arcade cabinets. I don't think in my little background, there's one in the background, but I'm looking at that too and importing that. It's it's like crazy. Like these things are, are just the shipping. You got to get space in a shipping container and it's like six to nine months, right? To, to wow. get certain things where people are, are trying to import. So it's a lot different. What tips, any of y'all can answer, not in order. What tips do you guys have for, for retro gamers collectors, right? To be able to find deals or, or find hidden gems. And then a second part to that is, what do you guys think about your personal opinions, right? Um, about a lot of YouTubers, because one of you guys said that the prices just started skyrocketing. I think it was on the Godzilla, Godzilla card, right? Yeah. It's like, what do you guys think about this stuff that's happening with WADA games and YouTube speculators that'll sit there and there's the rumors that they'll make a video and drive the demand up because they bought like 10 copies of this thing on eBay like two weeks before. And, and basically then they can, can flip it. Because me personally, I think it's scummy, but I understand it, right? But it at the same time, it's... um, And WADA themselves did that, right? With Super Mario Brothers Sealed. Um, yeah. And what are your guys' thoughts around? And where can people find deals now? Because now you got people entering don't give a damn about they're just buying these games to sit there and hold it let's say for a year and then and then flip it like it's a <clears throat> real estate property or something you know what are your thoughts any yeah. of you guys I, I personally don't tend to collect a lot of stuff um i tend to go down the same route <laughs> that ryan mentioned like getting the minis um you can get quite a lot of good systems like you mentioned you know you can hack the ones and add more files i've got the uh, super console x pro is one that i really like that's got loads of systems on there and loads of games on there and for me it's about playing the games right and like there's exactly. take, take one game out of that list for example would be like say castlevania symphony of the night played through that if you buy the actual box sealed copy of that or something that's worth a lot of money that's a really expensive game and for yeah. a minute fraction of the price you can get a system that plays a rom of it for like a fraction of the price now I, I i've never been one to like hack a um current gen system and like download games i tend to play like um you know the games i'm playing on roms are going to be things that are you can no longer buy it from the developers or the actual game creators you're exactly. going to be buying it from like a cex or second hand or ebay so you know I, I don't feel so bad about you know downloading the roms and, and playing those um but for me it's about about playing the games and it's also about space i am quite envious of the people where you see people with like these games rooms and i think yeah that'd be amazing to have a room dedicated to games and they look awesome don't they if you have them all up on the shelf you've got your different systems and like we've got loads of people in our group that share their setups and their games room and they do look really cool so i, I completely appreciate why people want to do that um it's just I, I tend to go for a box that doesn't take up a lot of space like i play loads of games and yeah we mentioned the the water thing with with mario 64 well i don't know how much that went for but it's like in the millions yeah. and the thing that i find really difficult about that is there's no way that is worth that much money and i just think how what else could you pay would you could you get for that amount of money you could like pay off some, several people's mortgages like you could feed you know how many families could you feed for a lot you know a lifetime yeah. for that sort of money it's crazy to buy a um, mario 64 it's like i've got a copy of mario 64 in my loft but i've just got the cartridge it's like why is it in a cardboard box with plastic sealant around it suddenly worth that amount of money it just yeah it, it just is so dodgy to it's me it's like there's something weird about it's that. not even the best version well the, D, the ds is a better version right with mm. the other playable characters and then yeah, it is. when they hacked the source code and they re they actually fixed it right they, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's the thing with retro games it, the version is what the version is so they actually, when they got the source code and redid it, the game and fixed some of the bugs in it, um, even updated the sprites or the the layers, actually not sprites because it's 3D, right? But the layers on the, uh, it's just an amazing game. And like you said, I don't get it. Super Mario Brothers, right? This, you know, uh, just a picture, <laughs> a screenshot of us is bigger than Super Mario Brothers, right? The, yeah. the actual file size for that to go for millions because Crazy. it's sealed mm -hmm. it, it yeah, just it, it just always because one thing you said you know two of you guys have said that really it's about the game so if it's about the games it's about the game mm -hmm. it, i get it where some collectors use do it for nostalgia but as we're moving more and more towards um digital games right which i know nintendo Ali, that's what's gonna gonna but but they're still limited run games, right? They'll they'll bring yeah. the, the digital into physical for, la, 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 for la, people la. like you. But <laughs> it's like, and, and like what Dob said, the hundred gigabyte updates, it's crazy. Me and me and Shadow Dragon, 
you know, have have talked about this back and forth. And I don't know the answer, right? But it's just to me, I sit there and I'm a futurist. So I look, what, what's gonna happen 10 years from now? What's gonna be this? I got a lot of flack by mentioning NFTs because everybody thinks NFTs, the negative connotation, which is um, you know, everybody's trying to sell pictures of whatever, their dogs and stuff for like ten thousand dollars. Um, they're <laughs> their underwear or their poo even right um like i said like we talked about earlier the lady selling her farts in a jar so people sell whatever somebody buys people are willing to sell it like yeah. apparently 16 bits and bobs isn't willing to buy for a thousand pounds splatterhouse too <laughs> but some people some people might yeah. and that's the thing where I, I look at it and i go if it's about the games man you want to just play the games you want to play it in whatever format triangle face said a great point if a game's not even available no more in terms of the developers, etc. But one thing, and I want to hear your perspective on this too, Triangle Face, a little later in the discussion, is um, a developer. A developer only gets paid once, right? Probably when they when the game is sold to a distributor first, and the distributor sells it to your local shop or the big retailers or directly, and then they purchase it retail versus wholesale, etc. When we sell it, and when Dobbs and 16 bits and bobs finally get this transaction done on Splatterhouse house two the original developer who's probably not even alive anymore at this point because that's like what a 30 year old game um they're not getting paid for it right they're not getting paid for that transaction so it's kind of tough and then the legality of roms obviously anything nintendo they're gonna sue the bejesus out of you put you in jail and everything yeah. like that but, but everything else is pretty much like and for some content creators in terms of video games some of them do it for the love and some of them are are great to see their art right go to as many people as possible and some of them they're like no they, they're not feeling the roms or they're not feeling this they're not feeling that because they're not making money they're like musicians like kanye west or metallica you know 20 something years ago with napster and everything like that they don't want their stuff shared they don't want the masses they want to make their money and can you blame them so that's always the gray area we're not gonna solve that or world peace here <laughs> but what are you guys like thoughts around that right roms versus you know and and purest things right get into the purest things because are you guys you talked about using the mini classics but there's some people out there like no you gotta have a crt you know what i'm trying to say and those are usually people that are hunched over because crts are so heavy <laughs> you gotta have crts you gotta have original hardware and yet they don't understand things like FPGA or technology or anything like that, where it's like, well, that's emulating the hardware and you can still play the original games, you know, and that's analog. And so what are your thoughts on that whole keeping retro games alive, purist, CRT versus LS LCD? Just just talk, guys. There, there's something quite to. satisfying about putting a cartridge into a game system. So I can mm -hmm. I can get that. Um, but the whole CRT. Who wants a CRT TV yeah, nowadays? Yeah. They take up a ton of room. The only the only thing I'll, I'll argue with that though is the light gun games, because yeah. CRTs will still work with light guns. You can't use a modern TV. But other than that, I've, you're right. Yeah, I wouldn't want a CRT TV just for all games. I'd only want it if I was playing a light gun game. I've got um, my very small CRT TV still in my uh, wardrobe. It's the one I had when I was a kid, um, and it still works. It still plays NTSC VHS, which was one of the main reasons I remember getting it, because, again, back in the 90s, there were so many horror movies that you couldn't get in the UK. So my, my dad mm. would um, get friends that were going specifically to America. They'd bring back American videos. So I still have my NTSC TV, which I will use for my older games, because it's just it looks better. Um, and I do agree with Ryan, there is something very satisfying about playing an original game on original hardware with the original controller and everything like that. But on the flip side to that, I'm totally in the ballpark of, of, of ROMs. You know, I've got an RG351P. Um, it's an incredible little handheld that's just pumped full of like 3,000 games. I'm never going to play all those games. But it's got so <laughs> many games on there that are crazy money that i am not paying that kind of money as much as i love having collections i love physical media i love box art all that kind of stuff especially 90s box art but there's no way i am dropping that kind of money on some of these games just to be able to play them like earthbound for me was one i never played it when it came mm -hmm. out at the time even though i had a super nintendo and only when you get to like being a bit older and everyone starts talking about Earthbound, you're like, oh, cool, maybe I'll play that. And you sort of end up looking it up. You're like, I'm not paying that for that game. 
you get the SNES Mini. Yeah, it's loaded on the SNES Mini with you know Star Fox 2 that never came out, and a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. Mario yeah. RPG, which again is another crazy expensive game, especially if you want the PAL version. So, yeah, I'm I, as long as you get to play the game, like who cares? Like really, there's, come on. There's one thing. Um, there's one thing we were going to say earlier. Um, sorry, it's about uh, like how to help what to collect now. Ollie did do a video on the 3DS stuff, didn't you, Ollie? That just come out. Mm. And like I think yeah. you're saying, it depends on what you're collecting for now. So like that, um, that stuff back on like the snares, the the nares and all them. That's all like crazy money now. So now it's a case of trying to find like a an Xbox 360 or a PS2, PS3 game, which you can pick up for absolute peanuts now, like dirt cheap. Like what did I see? Beyond Two Souls the other day it was like two pounds. Was that like three bucks? And it was like um. So these are the systems that if you're wanting to like be like collect is to try and get on these now because they're only going to go one place and they're only going to be going up so for me personally i've literally just i've got an old school like bread bin version of the ps3 up in the loft but i've also literally just picked up a um slim which was dirty as hell which i had to take apart and clean up <laughs> but i've only literally just bought it on purpose just so that um i can start playing these ps3 games I've been going through trying to pick up ones dirt cheap because, like with the well, with e-shops and that all closing, like you're saying, you buy these things online. You only own them until they like Nintendo are going to flip that switch. That's, just, well, that's gone. So yeah. my yeah. birthday yeah. next month, yeah. I've just picked yeah. up. I've just picked up the two Zelda games on the Wii U I didn't have for under mm. under fifty quid. So yeah. do you know what I mean? Can... That, that, you've got to get it now while it's hot. Yeah, and you collect, mentioned like collect. Nintendo, um, like when you're looking at ROMs and things like that, I think with Nintendo is one of the only companies like they still want you to buy their old games, like the eShops and things like that, and they want you to buy like the the online stuff for Switch. So you're buying those games, and I think they've got a lot more mm -hmm. of a crackdown on people having ROMs and things like that, but just mm -hmm. because they want you to because you can still get the games from Nintendo. I think that's mm -hmm. the big difference. Things you can still get the game from them, and and one system we talk about a lot on the show, and we've uh, Ryan hosts a um a podcast called EverChat, um, which is talking about the Evercade system, which is bringing mm -hmm. out um, cartridges. And we had the Oliver Twins on with us to talk about their Evercade cartridge they brought out, because there's an Oliver Twins Evercade cartridge. And they even said themselves, said, we, weren't we didn't expect to make any money from Dizzy. Like, we made Dizzy years ago. And they're like, oh, you make money off the game up that month, and then it's about the next game. So like, oh, you know, people people are playing and enjoying the game, great. And as soon as they're like, oh, can we make this Evercade cartridge of Dizzy? They're like, yeah, you can do that. It's like, oh, we'll chuck it in the charity bucket. And apparently all money that is made um off of the dizzy um or the oliver twins evercade cartridge they, they they just give that all to charity so they just donate that to charity oh wow so, that's great which i thought was really that's cool good. so they're like oh, yeah we don't want to make we don't think we make any money off of dizzy nowadays if people are buying a dizzy mm -hmm. cartridge chuck it to charity uh so i thought that was a really good attitude to have from you know directly from the developer saying that but the other the other thing i really enjoy about the evercade um and coming back to sort of modern games and things like that is the modern retro games and then seeing the um the resurfacing of indie developers and having those like, sort of bedroom coders that just make a game. Like we had a guy, um, Alistair Lowe, on with us from Low Tech Games who made Flea. Uh, and he, it was a solo project. He just made Flea on his own. And, and to play those sorts of games again, you kind of get, although they're new games, you kind of get that feeling back of like you're, the people are making stuff on their own. Um, and you've got that resurgence of those bedroom coders. If you play a modern game, like I know your latest Call of Duty and you beat it, you see a huge list of credits, absolutely loads of people involved in games. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice to see like that those indie developers coming back and having some of those really fun little. Retro well, one thing I would say with the indie developers though, um, when they put a game on a NES cartridge, for example, they still charge fifty quid for it. Yeah, they do. And it's like, <laughs> I think it's that there's a novelty charge for that, isn't there? Because mm. there, there are people like me that I really want that flea NES cartridge. I'm waiting to the yeah. point where I've got fifty pound where I can kind of go like, yeah, well, there we go. I'm going to do it yeah. um, because it's, it's the novelty, isn't it, of playing it on your NES? I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, and and it's a, a new game coming out on that system, mm, isn't it? Like but, old hardware, yeah, yeah. Plus, I, yeah, know just... I know who it's going to. I know the money's going directly into into yeah. Alistair's pocket, and you're like, yeah, the guy's a cool dude. Like he gave up his time to chat to us. Like, yeah, cool. I'll give him fifty quid. Yeah, mm. we just did an unboxing of a of a brand new brand new retro game, um, Dungeons and Doom Knights, that was done by artix gaming and and you know met him at a conference we sponsored where there's a lot of indie developers making new games gv gaming is making another one called hazard um and it's pretty cool man these guys use nes maker have you guys heard of that kind of 
SDK, I think it is, or like a software yeah. development kit where people are making indie developers can make new games and new hardware and uh, I mean, new games on on actual cartridges for old hardware and stuff like that. There, there's a um, a six year old man that's making uh, he was in that that Pretendo Power um, Pretendo and Power magazine that Artix put out with Dungeons and Do Nice Collectors Edition, a six year old making a new nintendo entertainment system game and that it's just amazing. blew my mind i'm like <laughs> crap shit you know part of my yeah. first job man but uh that's some cool stuff i i liked doing the unboxing and everything and then i packed it up and put it away it's a gold cart like the nes one and two blunders right that you got yeah. um it's a gold cart so i'm like oh man it brought back a lot of doing that unboxing that's why i did it like shaky grainy told my daughter hold the can't hold the phone <laughs> right because you know um, I think one of you guys was saying, yeah, if you got a spare room and everything that you can make a game room and we listen purposely the last 18 months, we, when we bought the house, we live in me and my wife, I gave, uh, I had to sacrifice and give her a wine room. Um, and, I, and I, and I put this, the spelling in there, um, right where she drinks wine and, and wines, but so I can have my little game room. But again, you guys, if you guys follow us on, on Instagram. You know, um, I've been posting pictures. We got flood damage in there and everything like that. So I got to redo the entire game room for 2022. But it's just a little little nook and cranny, right? We stopped having kids. So in order for me to be able to afford the game room, I had to make that conscientious decision. No more kids because then I got to give up my game room. Or then, or Liliana has to, she's not watching anymore probably, but um, <laughs> so she has to give up the wine room. So 16 bits and bob says something about the sindin light gun i actually ordered that that's another thing that i'm supposed to get mine i think like the wave i'm in third week or fourth week of march so crossing my fingers but then again i don't have a game room anyway for it right now because they got to come in and redo the entire floor um and then we got to put everything back so yeah so my stuff my collection right now is is all my box games and everything is literally next to the side of the bed where I lay, where I sleep. So I got everything boxed. I got all my <laughs> Nintendo games. My my. Oh, she is watching. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> Always you're in watching. Trouble. Damn it. So um, <laughs> but now, so tell me, while wow, we we kind of like wrap things up and everything like that. What what is the number one thing of piece of advice you have for let's say people that want to get into content creators? Some people that are watching this on a replay. You know we get we'll probably get we're not we're not big huge, super huge right like like top hat or some of the stateside guys metal jesus spawn wave but we're we're growing right we advertise and everything like that so some of the 1000 2000 people that might watch this on a replay you know and everything like that we've had a bunch of people stop in and out watching us live what advice do you guys have for people that want to create content right i didn't start out doing this stuff i'm at, this is 165th episode I think I, I sound a lot better, more natural and everything like that, doing these things. Doing, I'm not a natural interviewer. What do you guys have tips? Because you guys got like some great talent. You guys uh, have done a bunch of these. You guys go for, you know, almost two hours. What tips, advice do you guys have? And um, have, where can people reach out to you? I know you said that a lot of the uh, creators reach out to you to be interviewed. Where can they reach out to you guys too? to do that if they want to we, we've got a facebook page retro gaming revival we're on instagram as well retro gaming revival twitter same um youtube obviously retro gaming revival um one thing i i would say to anyone looking to start out um as a content creator surround yourself with people like your friends because doing it with these four um it doesn't seem like it's hard work we we yeah. every time we do a stream i enjoy it if if i can't make it then i know these four will still do it um it's, it's just brilliant and and when you have guests on invite guests on um whose content you enjoy yourself so when you're talking to them you're passionate about them um yeah that, that's one bit of advice i, I would definitely definitely give I would say just also, um, have, yeah, have fun sorry, with it. Right. No, you're right. I was going to say just, yeah. just totally have fun with it. Like we're, you know, we're, we're, you see on some of our earlier streams, you know, we're a little bit awkward because it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a completely new thing. 
Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just I know everyone says I'll do YouTube for the fun of it, but it, it, that is the main reason why I think a lot of people kind of want to do it is because it is fun. You know, a year mm -hmm. ago, if you told me we'd been talking to Dave Perry or, you know, in another year's time, we'd be on, you know, a channel like yourself, someone in America that's like, yeah, I want to talk to you guys. Be like, why do you want to talk to us? Like, we're just five dickheads from the UK who like <laughs> games. Like, no one wants to talk to us. But we have spoken to these people just because we wanted to and kind of reached out and, and have kind of had fun with it. Um, but I guess the other thing is just just get involved with the community. We're we're so new to the retro gaming community. You know, we're only been in it about a year and a bit now. Um, but just get to know the people in it, especially uh, sort of in your in your country as well. But obviously transatlantic as well. But you know, the the UK people have been great. We've made some great friends from this community. You know, Ali's watching. You know, he's he's an absolute riot. Hopefully, at some point, you know, we'll get to meet the guy and you know have a couple of drinks with him because he's just so much fun. Um, and we've we've made some great friends from from doing YouTube and doing the streams and stuff. So it's uh, that just feeds the fun. You know, you get to actually hang out with people and just have a chuckle. We're, it's great. So we're, we're yeah. quite lucky. Well, there's five of us. Um, we all kind of like do like I do. All, we've just started TikTok. I just started TikTok because, like you said, it's the biggest. Like it is at the minute the biggest one going, and we've got, managed to get us over a thousand followers in like a month. And it was just by like mainly updating us on. Awesome. Trying to show, like, I was clipping bits off of what, and I was crappy at first, and it just comes with time. And, like, um, and like the first couple of shows, I was like the old hat with, because where I don't work, there's all these guys that were working from home and have all the gear because they have to work from home. I basically got binned off out of my job when I was using, like, my, my tablet. And um, I, felt, <laughs> I just felt like, you know what I mean? I felt like Christmas. I was the one who, like, my camera was crap, my sound quality was bad. And like I said to my missus, I said, right, I'm going to. Obviously, we're, we're getting more and more followers now. We're getting, I need to up my game here. So it was literally just bought like everything, Brad got everything for Christmas, like the light, the camera, the microphone, and everything. But um, it's like you, like you said, you just do it for the love. You do it for like you, we're just mates just talking games. We get people yeah. in and we like talking to people about games. And if you enjoy what you're doing, I couldn't, you couldn't care less who's, how many are watching, how many are subs. You're just doing what, and it, it's, grow, it's grown with time. Do you know what I mean? So our Facebook grows, our Instagram's growing, our, our tick, everything is all growing, and it's good because we we all stream, we have a laugh. Like after this, we're all playing among us, and we're all meeting up with me people out of our community. Yeah. And last time it was the right laugh. We had my son, who's like ten, involved, and he just kept voting for Triangle Face, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> you just have a laugh, like it's just, yeah. you know what I mean. I, I think the game of the light. You're having a laugh. And, I, yeah. I think that's a great point, Blun, is we don't, none of us take ourselves ser like too seriously. We, we all have got very similar sense of humour. We all mm -hmm. get on socially. Um, you know, there's a few times where we've gone to the local arcade and had a few beers and it, yeah, where, where we're all mates, I think that makes what we do so much easier and it doesn't feel like a chore. Mm -hmm. it, it just feels like we're just facetiming each other having a laugh and chatting to someone from the gaming community at, at the same time i think when i did my channel uh, on my own before i like i'll echo what you said ryan and what you said ollie the, the two things i wasn't doing then was i was doing it by myself so i wasn't doing it with any friends and i wasn't getting involved in community like i wasn't sharing it in facebook groups so i wasn't really promoting my videos i was just doing it for fun and putting it up there putting it on youtube and i got you know a fair amount of views and i think i got like a few of my final fantasy 7 videos did quite well because they're like guides um and the experience doing that after i sort of i stopped doing that and did some other projects and and th i did do work on some other stuff and then to come and join uh retro game revival and get involved in that the difference is it's we're, you're putting effort into it but it's not work it, it's fun and it's enjoyable and everyone's contributing various different things like blunders is doing loads of shorts ollie's doing his game pickup advice videos ryan hosts everchat Dorbs is like getting all the different guests on and he runs the uh, instagram and twitter and things like that so we're all doing stuff and and, and triangle yeah, face you're doing all, all our graphics all yeah. our yeah. thumbnails yeah, doing when, the thumbnails when, when you like look that. back to the thumbnails i used to do in the early days to what you do now is it's worlds <laughs> apart yeah and the fun thing with that as well is like i i did like a at university i did multimedia technology and i learned how to do a bunch of stuff and i don't really use that in my work so for using that in my hobbies and stuff i feel like I'm, i can actually get back into doing creative stuff and i want to kind of get back into making games and stuff as well because it's just it's rekindled a bit of fun for that sort of stuff that i had yeah yeah so one i've got one, um one thing i just put up there i'm just gonna leave it up there leave a comment below guys people that are watching live oh. or the replay and then what i'll do is and tag 
who you think retro gaming revival should don't don't vote for me you know what i'm trying to say don't flatter <laughs> me but vote, vote for who you guys think and if this is open worldwide and we'll we'll pick one of those random you know not somebody saying hi or i want to win right actually put some thought around it we'll give out a 25 dollars amazon gift card right um but I'm sorry, I cut someone off. Go ahead. No, that's, that's fine. When you say we for the 25 m twenty five dollars, is that you? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the penny venture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm He's only your joking. CFO. He's retro gaming revival CFO. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of tips. Going back to what you said earlier about um, buying stuff, um, I do look on eBay. Uh, not a lot, but I do look on eBay. But sometimes it's good for look for spelling mistakes. So people can list, uh, I don't know, Super Mario, for example, but list it as Super Maria because um, mm. they just press the wrong key on their keypad. Um, you know, Nintendo, I've seen before. So look yeah. on eBay for spelling mistakes. Um, Facebook Marketplace is really good. Really, yeah, really good. Right, yeah. You can just do search for like, I don't know, PS1 job lot. And there's loads of stuff that comes up um, quite local to where you are. Sometimes yeah. there's rubbish stuff, but sometimes there's like one amazing game in in a bundle of like 10 15 games and they want like 20 quid for it but that game alone is worth 50 quid so straight away it's like mm -hmm. can i have that please um games room i'd love to have a games room but i don't want to do all the dusting so, <laughs> um i won't be doing that um but also if you're going to do youtube um and you're quite nervous because i think like ryan touched on earlier and probably ollie as well our first few videos terrible quite nervous so we had a few drinks before so we have a few drinks before that and also <laughs> if you've come up with an idea um make sure you record it properly so for example um if you come up with a character and seven months later this character is on tv <sighs> and you haven't got a writing credit for it you know what i mean i know ali knows what i'm on about here um so yeah if you've got ideas like record them properly Note them down, etc., etc. I'm probably getting copyright as well. Shocking me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. Oh, you should tell them about it. <laughs> um, do you want me to bore you with a story? I can bore you with a story. If you want. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so, um, I won't put something like no, I won't, yeah. We had a um TV legend on 90s TV legend, gaming legend, and um, I said, oh, I've got this idea for a cut you coming back on tv for a show so we can have it like a mockumentary so you're married you've got a couple of kids and one of them is called uh, a certain name and he's like yeah that's that that's, that's good yeah yeah and then six months later the name that i suggested is this person's son on a tv show so what? yeah <laughs> I, I i haven't got a writing credit at all even a you know producer credit i wouldn't mind that um, I'm not fussed about money. doesn't really bother me, you know, just to get a bit of recognition even, for... Even for a character. $25 gift card or something like that. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, so, yeah, if you've got ideas, get them, get them jotted down and recorded. That was funny. And, and build, make, make your timeline. <laughs> so I suggested it here. This happened here. This happened here. It was broadcast here. This is when I've contacted <laughs> them and they've ignored me, ignored me, ignored me. You know, stuff like that. So... Um, yeah, there's, there's my uh, there's my top tips. <laughs> He's never going to let that one go. I'm never. <laughs> the, the thing no, you'll find if you watch our, watch our streams is we, we might not always be you know overly slick in how we operate things, but we make up for it in just organic content and tangents yeah. and inside jokes that we don't necessarily always explain to the people watching, uh, but it creates some fairly uh, funny moments. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we ended up getting a guest, didn't we? Of <laughs> Then we, we get that, that, we got Rick Waller. Up. It's just a guy who's yeah. on UK version of like Pop Idol, like like a singing TV show. And um, we were like wondering what he was up to now. And the next thing we know, um, Dorbs was contacting all these fake accounts. And then whilst we were on air, and then by the time we got to the end of the show, he had found him. And bang, he's yeah. on the next show. Yeah, and now we're really good friends with him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. really it's nice. nice point. Point. I think he's going to join nice us for some Among Us in a bit. So mm. yeah. just yeah. A, a final, a final comment. Just watch our videos for the greatest intro video ever on a podcast that's all i'll say <laughs> 90s game and show we, music yeah and we're gonna have we're gonna have the links and and everything like that afterwards uh, they're in there now but 
afterwards we'll update it with all these all the other links to the podcast etc so people can find you um wrapping things up a little bit and we've gone we're gonna have a part two with these guys i'm just letting everybody know right um episode 166 sometime this week like you guys know i'm uh, it's so crazy um for me right now in my day job you know that um and i'm picking up a new client starting tomorrow so it might not be till next sunday right when i have some time um and again i i my game room so liliana the beautiful liliana knows that's why i haven't changed my background because now i live vicariously through this zoom background i found with the arcade cabinet <laughs> it's nice. It's um, nice yeah and 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 the thing is guys too i just got an arcade cabinet and i can't do the content around it a, a full-blown uh main cabinet and i have on top of that um a pinball cabinet so again yes don't have much space right the game room doesn't have everything but it's my little little space we live in florida doesn't have basements so because of the water table so don't really it's my little space it's my my cubby that i can go into and and when i'm working turn on machines and hear all the you know noises and everything like that we got to do a part two um definitely because i want to want to talk about um there's great stuff i wanted to talk about but we ran out of time um so be on the lookout all you guys that uh, i know shadows in the you know game dragons here um, and he was one of the early ones, so he might have his Steam Deck any day now, right? Mm -hmm. The Steam Deck as a platform and as a retro platform, right? A lot of people are starting to release videos. So, you know, I'm guessing I'll, we, we can catch it on you guys' show, right? Because we're running out of time. But how, <laughs> how you guys see that, you know, um, there's a lot of you guys were talking about Tommy Tellerico and Amico, and there's that's its own show um i know you guys talk a lot about the the evercade you know and that's uh you know that's a that's a nice little machine right i mm -hmm. i see that too i see what they're trying to do um <laughs> 16 bits and bobs i see i've seen <laughs> all these videos he's not wrong True. he's not wrong yeah. you know and um yeah i know i i've been out there guys and the craziest things i've been to london the craziest thing to me in europe in general is how small the streets are right yeah. in comparison to the states yeah. where i think and and i think it's a bad thing i'm not saying it like oh i'm not the classic american i think i think the advent i'm a technologist i think the advent of, of automated via you know autonomous driving autonomous vehicles stuff like that yeah. we can do and reclaim space because less yeah. cars would be on the road less cars to do parking yeah. and everything like that and more beautiful so what i found in in all of europe is the smaller roads and everything like that it's much more beautiful it was crazy to me to see people <laughs> driving like half on the sidewalk though to get around yeah. people i was like yeah. oh, what's going <laughs> on? it's crazy that, that was madness to me because i'm like Try dude bright, you know <laughs> they're gonna hit me yeah i was i i did i traveled from london i traveled to brighton yeah um, that's smooth right there i made i made the the worst mistake staying um in a hotel close to the airport as opposed uh, to yeah. i should have just stayed yeah. right in the heart of the city right so i couldn't go nowhere i'm sitting there back in the hotel i'm like okay i'm i'm done with, for the day in the office let me go enjoy it and i got to call a car service to take me 30 minutes to <laughs> you guys call it the what if Jeep. i'm this is pg-13 the lube is that Jeep. what you call it Jeep. 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 Yeah, well there goes my sponsorship man because now people are gonna <laughs> tune in and go what this guy's talking i wish about it was called the stuff. lube that would yeah. be quite uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really <laughs> The two be great. okay so yeah i'm that that Amer classic american when i'm over there but guys what, what you guys said is, is spot on what shadow said earlier um <laughs> <laughs> did you think it was gta yeah i did i thought i'm thinking i'm like dude people just trying to run me over people really don't like america internationally man <laughs> but um australia that's that's how i was in australia too man like they they told me i have an accent you know i'm trying to say in australia i'm like i don't have an accent you guys have an accent yeah. right but th that's how it was what what um game dragon was saying right need more gamer friends and less biz friends that's how i feel too right he said a point like that like i got business friends everything like that we talk shop and everything i want to be able to do this you guys said it we've gone for an hour and some change it's like just chatting with with, with friends 
And even though we're separated by five hours and we're separated by, I don't know how many miles it is, you know, between the Atlantic from Orlando to, to London. But, um, I really feel like, Hey man, when, you know, when you guys are down here visiting Nintendo world at Disney, I mean, at universal, when it opens up, up right. Yeah, you yeah. guys are more than welcome to, we can hang out and you guys can come over and see Liliana's wine room. It's um, beautiful. <laughs> what an my offer. game room still won't be, won't be <laughs> rebuilt by then. But, uh, you know, we got to hang out in the same thing when I go back out there. Right. I have, you, you yes. know, my wife, my wife and kids, me being the exception, they have, um, they're Portuguese citizens and have Portuguese passports and everything like that. So it makes it a lot easier to, to, to travel with the EU passport. Well, Portuguese EU passports. Um, unfortunately I don't. So everyone knows I'm a, you know, I'm an American and they hate on me. <laughs> well, they, You're not they Puerto hate, Rican. They hate on us because we're not part yeah. of the EU anymore. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're in the same. Yeah. That, that too. But we got to get together and everything like that when I'm out there. Um, hopefully when the things subside and, and stuff like that, that's one of the things that, you know, working remote and, and being a global, um, global people like we are. You know, we, we do travel internationally. It's just sucked for the last two years, not being able to travel anywhere. Usually I have status everywhere. So again, I'm inviting myself to whatever pub you guys said you got or arcade pub that you guys go oh, to definitely. and we're going to hang out after I beat, after I beat the winner of Ali Ali's uh, street fighter tournament that's being <laughs> sponsored by JLS gaming. And that's because, you know, I figured, Hey, let me sponsor it. So, you know, um, basically paying somebody to be, you know, my, my fodder and whatever. So I'm going to kick, kick their ass. So Ali, are you out there? And this is the thing too, right? Press nitro. Uh, so this guy, all right. Okay. So we're international. So this is one of our, our Spanish guys. I don't know if you guys know what he's saying, but um, no. <laughs> he said, this is an old ass game, but he would love to see a gameplay on Crash Nitro Kart um and translated to spanish because he no habla ingles um oh, and guys wow. we do that so this even this will be translated we translated to seven to nine languages i say that you know um so we'll translate this transcription um and again we get a lot of people that watch from latin america um europe which includes you know Sp spain spanish portuguese um um arabic chinese hindi we get a lot of people that watch from, from India and stuff like that. They may not comment and stuff. And like Liliana said, not a, not a lot of people watch um, the content on devices where they can't really uh, comment and stuff like that, like, t like the TV and stuff like yeah, that, guys. Yeah, yeah. Mm. With that said, I want to personally thank you guys. You guys have been great guests. I want to thank you guys for what you do for the retro gaming community. I totally understand why you guys are having explosive growth because you guys put out great content. You... You do like what I tell Shadow all the time. They say dance like nobody's watching, right? You guys put out content, not like nobody's watching. You put out content from a wholesome place, right? And people are watching. And just like with Ali Ali, you guys are, are superstars and are going to definitely have channels that, that blow up and compete with some of these guys that you've been having on the show, like Top Hat Gaming, Lady Gebs. These are, and these are people that I, I've watched and I've seen. I've seen Gebs Game Room and everything like that. And and all that stuff um i've watched the in-depth uh ladies in-depth stuff and she she surprises me with some of the stuff that she mm -hmm. presents i'm like She's wow crazy and and top hat gaming his character and stuff like that so these are guys like i've been watching for a while and you guys got them as guests on the show that's phenomenal i can understand um because you guys are i'm using american terms here top guys right um so <laughs> you know top guys top gents and all that stuff with that said, I got some last minute comments. Great stream. That was awesome. Um, oh, thank Christian, I'll say it and I'll try my español ahora. Um, si, sí, conocimos que tú dijiste entre Mario, I mean, no Mario Kart, uh, Nitro Kart Racing. Y vamos a tratar eso um, con lo otro gente en el canal de nosotros, JLS Gaming. So, pero vamos a tra traducir. Todo esto en español también. So, en como se ahora, tú lo vas a ver en español, lo, los subtitles. Basically what I said, right, because half of that I said it in Spanglish, was 
you guys, you know, give it like six hours because YouTube, once they do their initial transcription, and this is a tip for you content creators out there. Once they do that, I take that file, I translate it, you know, with a, with a program into multiple languages, and then I upload those captions into to really appeal to our global fan base, right? That's amazing. So, God, yeah, is. man. So that's a little, not a tip, but it's something I picked up from, um, I think it might have been Think Media those guys if you guys ever heard of that channel and they talk about like content creation and everything but really their focus was like on what cameras was the best camera to stream and everything and when i started out i really watched a lot of their shows um they have a lot of strategies on monetization for those of you that are looking to monetize um we really want to put the love out and everything like that so i haven't done many of those things to to monetize it just because i haven't had the chance to design new t-shirts and stuff like that right but guys, sorry for boring you guys with all that stuff. We are out of here. Thank you guys again. Peace.